Today I'm going to be showing you guys this set of 4411 second variation custom tactics that have been formatted to help you guys create more overloads in your attacks. Let's get into it. It's worth noting before I run you through the tactics, 4411 has gotten some attention recently with pro player Johnny having a lot of success with that and people trying to emulate that style. I did do a video on those tactics which you can check out here. But these tactics are a different take on the 4411. It's not following that pro player approach. So, disclaimer out of the way. Getting into the tactics, the defensive style is balanced. Defensive width is 35, depth 55. You have a really, really flat midfield line in a 4411. It's not like a 4231 where your midfielders sit deeper. So, you get quite a good press without actually having your depth too high. So, 55, I really, really like for the depth. Build up play balanced. Chance creation also balanced. Not not direct passing. Now, balanced play is quite similar to direct passing, but it's not one-dimensional in the sense that everyone in the final third just makes sort of straight line runs. Balance just gives you kind of a mix of people coming short and running dependent on what the AI thinks is the better thing to do, what is going to aid you more in your attacks. I've been really enjoying it, especially, especially with this formation. So honestly, give balance, balance to go. It is awesome and it isn't actually completely alien to pro play either pro player tuga used a 4-3-2-1 with balance balance for quite some time so it's definitely still competitive despite being quite unorthodox offensive width 40 you get a lot of people in the attack in this one and i just found that making it a bit more compact made room for our overlap and it just basically played better so 40 is spot on for the width players in the box is seven quite aggressive it just lends to this formation Again, I've tried lower, but for this one, higher seems to work really well, as it does in the pro build with the standard 4411. So, seven is a really, really safe spot with this one. And then, corners, free kicks, just go with whatever your personal preference is. Player instruction. So, starting with our striker, you'll see they are on drift wide and stay forward now drift wide is a really effective instruction when you've got a one striker formation especially if it's a one striker formation where your wide men don't sit too narrow like a 4-3-2-1 this obviously your wide men are much wider on the pitch by having drift wide it means your striker doesn't get isolated and it's also easier to create link up play as well the striker will drift over generally to the side that you're attacking on so if you're going down the left you'll notice they just make run slightly off to the left it's nothing drastic they're not going to be running down the wings they just don't run in a straight line through the middle at the two center back they kind of pull over in between the centre back and the wing back. It's really easy to get link up play then between the striker the cam, the winger. It also creates this sort of offset with your cam and striker where they kind of work like two strikers but like a second striker where they sort of sit off of each other at an angle. It just makes the passing a lot easier because it's not such a robotic sort of stale shape. You get all these weird off angles for passes. It works really, really nicely. Getting into our cam, they are also just on stay forward on this one. So like the striker, on stay forward but nothing else. They'll get into the box regardless. I didn't feel the need to force that with the instruction. It gives you sort of two out balls and like I say they kind of work like a striker and second striker with that drift wide instruction on the big man up front and just having them both up top long ball knock it down it's just a great option for the counter attack to be honest so it just works that's why I've run with that one you can put the count and come back on defense but I've not found that necessary whatsoever both wingers just come back on defense nothing too special here you'll get them very involved in the build-up play anyway with the players in the box being on seven with that striker being on drift wide it's really easy to one twos and just trigger them with l1 runs not really any need to force anything instruction wise on these your two center mids are just stay back cover center this is more so they don't overcommit because when you've got seven players in the box these get so involved anyway they will actually make runs as well they won't just stay back so the stay back instruction is just so they don't run wild and then you've got no one covering the center of the park when the possession turns over so they're not really staying back while attacking they're just not over committing when attacking i would think of as this one getting into the wing backs the right back is stay back while attacking and then our left back is just on balance you can put overlap on if you want but i just put it on balance and it worked fine so i didn't feel the need to throw on the overlap but i think that's neither here or there that's totally up to you if you want to do that so what you'll find is because we're playing 40 width say if you've got an attack developing on the right and you're working across you generally pull everyone's team over to one side especially with the natural auto press and overload ball side built into this game anyway which most people have because they play a decent depth you'll find that this left back when they commit forward is always isolated on the far side always completely free 
and it's super easy to create overloads. You don't actually need to start your attack with the left back for them to find themselves getting through. You can actually work your attacks from the right and they can just be your spare person at the back. So it works either way. You haven't got to force your attacks down the side of your overlapping wing back. It just means no matter which side you start your attack, you just always end up with a spare person on the other side of the pitch based on wherever you started your attack. So it works an absolute dream. It isn't actually an instruction I started with. I did start with this on stay back. And I just found myself getting attacks where I was like, oh, if I only had an extra person just running across here. So it just got to the point where it was like, well, I'm going to have to run an overlapping wing back. And that's just going to serve how this formation is actually playing in game. So not an instruction I anticipated putting on these, but one that actually in practice seemed very necessary to get the most out of the attacks. As for the centre backs, goalkeeper these are all just on the default i'll show you guys just a few goals here with the formation that i scored so you can get an idea of how it plays in game but i'll give you a little bit of an idea as you watch these of the kind of players that you want in each position overlapping wing back make sure they're capable ping pass is actually a really nice addition i'm finding on overlapping wing backs your right back long ball pass plus is always a great addition for the big switch if you need to switch the ball which is very common at this stage in the game with that overload ball side we were talking about earlier it, you always generally find the other side of the pitch ends up very very naked so having the ability to switch the play is absolutely fantastic so long ball pass never goes amiss on a wing back as far as your two center mids go have some defensive capability on both but at this stage of the game with players all having like 90 plus stats you can just go for two box-to-box -box esque players i've got mateus who is slightly more defensively capable than bruno fernandez but nonetheless they're both capable everywhere very very high high esque players and i just enjoy that in this formation you haven't really got to go with the traditional big man anymore especially at this stage of the game for your cam you can truly go with an out and out striker in this formation because of how that drift wide on the actual striker kind of creates that offset it just feels like the traditional striker then second sort of striker playing off of them so by all means play two strikers one at striker one at cam you haven't got to have a more creative player there it can just be an out and out striker i would say if you have got a bigger more physical striker and a more nimble striker play the more nimble skillful player at the camp position and have your more aerial plus esque player up front if that is something you're running with that is everything from me today guys please give the tactics a try and let me know how you get on with them down below if you did enjoy the video i'll also link my custom tactics playlist in the description below for you guys to check out but as always guys if you did make it this far in the video i really appreciate your time if you did enjoy it Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and turn your bell on. Take care, guys.